Hello! In this video, I'm going to talk about some of the settings and features of MotionGen. I'm going to start in the settings menu by clicking on this gear icon. So there are a few settings here, and the first thing you can see is the width and height of the workspace. So this can be changed to say 5x5, five five, and you can see that the green rectangle that represents the workspace has become smaller. This is useful for a few reasons. Uh, one of them is that if you're drawing a mechanism over an image, the image will fit to the workspace area, so you can make this smaller or larger by changing the size of the workspace. To explain the other reason, I'm going to go back into the settings menu, and I'll change this back. And you can see below here we have a tolerance slider. These three controls, the width, height, and tolerance of the workspace, have an effect on the way dyads are interpreted in MotionGen. If I close the settings menu here, you can see that there are a few different options in the dyad menu. Of the two dyads I have selected here, you can see that one of them is actually very large. And because it's so large, uh, this RR dyad can be reinterpreted as a PR dyad, which fits much better within the workspace. You can see here that the motion is still very similar to the 4R linkage. Now the size and tolerance of the workspace will actually affect how these dyads are interpreted. If I open the settings menu and make the workspace very large, you can see that none of these dyads have been reinterpreted. That's because an RR dyad will only be reinterpreted if it's longer than five times the maximum dimension of the workspace. The tolerance affects whether it's reinterpreted as an RP or a PR dyad. If the fixed pivot point of an RP dyad falls within the tolerance of the workspace, it's reinterpreted as an RP dyad. Otherwise, it's reinterpreted as a PR dyad. So changing the size and tolerance of the workspace will affect exactly how the dyads are interpreted. Also under the gear icon, there are help and information screens that can give you some information about the app and they have a link to our website. Now moving across the left on the menu bar here, there's a button to delete a linkage. So that's pretty straightforward. If I draw a bunch of poses here and select a single pose and press delete, it deletes just that object. Moving further to the left, there are buttons to undo and redo the last actions, so I can undo and redo deleting that pose. To the left of that is the button to reset the view, so say I zoom out really far here, I can press that button and the view is reset. Across on the left side is a button to export your linkage. The XML option isn't very useful at this point. Uh, but if you export to PDF, you can choose to attach it to an email or open the file to view. You can see here there's a picture of the mechanism, information about the constraints, including X and Y location and angle of each constraint. There's information about the linkage itself, including the X and Y position of each joint, and below that the length and angle of each link. So this can be very useful if you wanted to actually construct this linkage. Let me return to the app here and close this menu. Next to the export button is a button to create a new linkage and I'll generate a random linkage. Uh, but the linkage I was just working on isn't gone, it's been saved and it can be found by pressing the home button here. So this shows me all the linkages I've saved in the past including the previous one which is in the top right corner here. So I can select the previous one and press open to return to it. Finally, there's the sidebar menu here, and inside that are a couple examples. Uh, there are a few simulation examples here, and also a few five position synthesis examples. This example uh, synthesizes a mechanism that follows the motion of a shoulder. So you can see there are a few different options here that fit that motion. The final thing in the sidebar menu is the captured poses button. To explain this, I'm going to delete this linkage and reset the view, and I'll create a simple 4R linkage here. So now I can use the playback menu at the bottom here to capture the coupler position at various points. If I open the sidebar again, you can see that there are six captured poses. And if I press the button, it changes the simulation problem into a synthesis problem. So then I can tweak these poses slightly, and that change is reflected in the mechanism. So those are some of the settings and features of MotionGen.